I guess the, the first easiest comparison where there's no comparison is being in a theater versus being in a bar or being in a festival. And it's, it's really fun to entertain people when they're all just there having a good time and chit-chatting and socializing and eating and drinking. That's fun. And that's, you know, got its place in music. But when you come to a, to a theater and people are, have gotten a ticket and they've, you know, put on their nice clothes and they're, they're there to see a performance, um, you really feel like you can pull out your material that um, is really special to you because you know you have people's attention. Like, you can't go to a bar and play your most treasured song um, because people are just sitting there, like somebody's going to, you know, scream or drop a glass or, you know, something crazy is going to happen. But when you're in a theater, not only is it built for music and for acoustics and all that kind of thing, but you have that relationship of, with the audience of, I'm going to share something special with you, and they're all like, we're ready for it. This is what we came for. So that's really special. And then, then you've got the comparison between place like the Russell Theater, which is just, just to, um, I'm looking at it, is a work of art by itself with, you know, all the ornate plaster work and the painting and the ceiling and the stars that are going to be twinkling someday and all those things compared to like a facility. Because, you know, that's a career is designing facilities that are perfect with acoustics. You know, we ran this through the computer and we know all the acoustics are going to be perfect, but um, a lot of times they're not beautiful. You know, they might function really, really well, but they're not really beautiful. But a place like this, I'm sure they had some first-hand experience in designing for acoustics, but also you've got craftsmen and artists who have, have made it a really beautiful place to be. So. so early, early in the spring when the green for the love of Barbary Allen. He sent his servant to her town to the place where she was dwelling. My master is sick and he sends for you if your name is Barbary Allen. So slowly, slowly she got up and slowly she came unto him. But all she said when she got there, young man, I believe you're dying. A dying man, don't say I am, when a kiss from you would cure me. One kiss from me you never shall have. No, you can't have Barry Allen. Don't you remember the other day down at the tavern a-drinking? You toasted your health to the ladies all around and you slided Barry Allen. Oh, no, oh, no. I'm sure you are mistaken. I toasted my health to the ladies all around, but my love to Barry Allen. He turned his pale face to the wall, for death was in him dwelling. I do, I do to this white world. Be kind to Barry Allen. She had not gone more than halfway home till she heard the death bells and knelling. And everyone it seemed to say, hard hearted Barry Allen. She looked to the she looked to the west till she spied the corpse a coming. Oh, hand me down that clay cold corpse and let me look upon him. The more she looked, the more she blushed. 
blush till she blushed out into crying. I once could have saved this sweet little life. It was all for the want of trying. Oh, go and dig a grave for me. Go dig it long and narrow. Sweet William died for his own true love. Now I shall die for sorrow. They buried poor William in the new churchyard and Barbary in the old one. From the new churchyard sprung a rosy bush, from the old and sprung a green briar. They grew and they grew and they grew so tall till they could not grow any higher. They linked and they formed in a true love knot, the rose around the 